You know, I'm really, really fucking fuming. Like, fuming. Because I walk out of my, uh, walk out of my place with the dogs today. And the first thing I see is this. Do you see the streaks? Do you see those, the lines, the streaks? They look like, it looks like streaks of light, doesn't it? Like maybe it's coming from the, from the sunrise, but it's, it's not. Those, those streaks aren't actually coming from the sunrise because the sunrise is to the left. You must be sick of me going on about this. I'm getting, I'm really tired of going on about it. It doesn't look like a huge amount of cloud, does it? It's, oh look, what are you worrying about? Look, there's only a little bit of popcorn cloud up there. Why are you worried? Well, behind that cloud is, is this. It's all like popcorn clouds. I moved to this island in 2015 and when I arrived here, there were no chemtrails, there were no there were no streaks across the sky. There were no clouds like this. These sorts of clouds didn't exist. In 2015, above Tenerife, you never saw clouds like this. In 2015, above Tenerife. I lived here, I saw it. These sorts of clouds didn't start appearing until 2017, when they started what they've been doing since 2017, which is basically this. This crazy son of a bitch is flying right behind your typical uh, you know, DC-8 plane, and he's flying right into, oh, God, don't breathe. Oh. And you can see on the side, here's the charts where they actually, you know, you can see them testing the chemicals and what's coming out. Um, you know, here's the CO2, this is nitrous, uh, NO2, and then uh, nitrous par um, N particles, ultrafine particles, fine particles, non-volatile particle co concentration. So as they're flying through it, you can see these go off the chart up here um, in the ultrafine particles. So nanoparticles, the nanoparticles go through the roof up here to 10 to the 5 power. Um the, this is the this is what's going on right now. So if you think they're not testing these fuels with the biofuels and how they affect the climate and what they can do um, to to make the most of it, they are. And they got some fancy equipment underneath the wings. This is the plane that's flying behind the other one. Here comes the experimental fuel. Um, and you know they they pump in the biofuels and they go take off and that's the test plane that flies behind it and that's one very talented pilot flying directly into the chemtrails to test them so there's a lot going on and nobody's really going to talk about this but this is called accidental geoengineering i know i live in tenerife where they grow bananas but I didn't just come in on the last banana boat. But it's not an accident. And that's my biggest argument with all of this. This is not an accident. People don't know anything about this topic. They really don't understand this topic. And carbon black dust was used in 1958 to create and destroy clouds successfully for five freaking dollars. Well, that's why John F. Kennedy in 1961, while addressing the United Nations, said, We shall propose further cooperative efforts between all nations in weather prediction and then eventually in weather control. Because, you know, that's that power thing. Lyndon Johnson sounded much the same when he said it lays the predicate and foundation for the development of a weather satellite that will permit man to determine the world's cloud layer. And ultimately to control the weather. And he who controls the weather will control the world. Dun, dun, dun. He also talked about controlling space with the uh, sounding rockets and the harps and all of them things. From space, the masters of infinity. The fucking hubris on these wankers is so far beyond the pale. 
It's unbelievable. You would have the power to control the earth's weather, to cause drought and flood, to change the tides and raise the levels of the sea, to divert the Gulf Stream and change temperate climates to frigid. Control of space means control of the world. I bitched about cloud fart, planes making clouds, and um, the metals coming out of them. So what happened was they were going to write regulation on planes just like in 1970. We raised hell. They said, we hear you. We're going to actually regulate the airline industry for the first time in history. And during the Trump-Hillary election Breaking EPA to limit greenhouse gases from airplanes. No mention of clouds. No mention of metals. White House, then less than a week later, White House releases Federal Alternative Jet Fuel Research and Development Strategy. September 2016, China, U.S., and Europe pledge support for Global Aviation Emissions Pact. China, U.S., and EU all got together and said, we're going to use biofuels for contrail control. Right. So, yeah, so it's okay to work with China, the U.S., and the U.K. China. 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 There are a lot of ways you can hold them accountable. We're doing very serious investigations, as you probably know. And we are not happy with China. We are not happy with that whole situation. Because we believe it could have been stopped at the source, it could have been stopped quickly, and it wouldn't have spread all over the world. And we think that should have happened. And maybe that's a question you should ask China. Don't ask me. Ask China that question. September 12th, Greens moved to dismiss EPA lawsuit over airplane emissions. So all of these NGOs like the Sierra Club and, you know, all these groups We're suing the airline industry for Obama and the Paris Accord to try to make, you know, the the climate lords and technocrats and globalists happy that they were going to get rid of greenhouse gases um, coming from airplanes. And when I came in there with my group of chemtards and we all started talking about clouds and plane, you know, planes farting out metals. Um, they quickly moved to just say, you know what, we're going to deal with biofuels. There will be a 70% reduction in soot production, um, which will lead to less clouds, uh, less heating of the globe. And um, by the way, you guys who originally brought the lawsuit, just get rid of that. They did. And uh, what happened at the end? September 12th, Greens moved to dismiss EPA lawsuit over airplane emissions. One year later, now Trump's in office, October 10th, NGOs, non-governmental organizations, slam UN Aviation Agency plan for biofuels. Bill Gates is backing the first high-altitude experiment of one radical climate change solution, creating a massive chemical cloud that could cool the Earth. It's called solar geoengineering, and it's highly controversial. It would look something like this. Thousands of planes would fly very high and use nozzles to inject millions of tons of light reflecting particles into the stratosphere. It would create a thin chemical cloud of those particles around the whole planet, blocking some sunlight from reaching the surface. It would mimic a giant volcanic eruption, which we know cools the earth. Now, just to restate, Bill Gates is not God. Bill Gates is some kind of weird, socially awkward rich guy who lives in Seattle. He doesn't own the planet but he's now changing the planet single-handedly. This is not just over his yard in Seattle, this is over your yard. Bill Gates is not changing the planet single-handedly, but Bill Gates is providing a huge amount of funding for this. It's the UN. The UN is facilitating this. The UN.
These are our skies that they're messing around with. I know it doesn't look like much there, but these clouds turn into bigger clouds. These clouds contain particles and elements that filter down through the air and then we end up breathing in and absorbing in our skin. Thank you.